This lecture is about the syntax medical relation discovery and conditional entropy. In this lecture, we're going to continue the discussion of water association mining and analysis. We're going to talk about the conditional entropy, which is useful for discovering syntax medical relations. Earlier, we talked about the using entropy to capture how easy it is to predict the, the presence or absence of a word. Now we address the different scenario where we assume that we know something about the text segment. So now the question is, suppose uh, we know uh, eats occurred in the segment. How would that help us predict the presence or absence of a word like meat? And in particular, we want to know whether the presence of eats has helped us predict the, the presence of meat. And if we frame this uh, using entropy, then it would mean uh, we are interested in knowing whether knowing uh, the presence of eats could reduce the uncertainty about the meat or reduce the entropy of the random variable corresponding to the presence or absence of meat. We can also ask the question, uh, what if we know of the absence of eats? Would that also help us predict the uh, presence or absence of meat? So these questions can be addressed by uh, using uh, another concept called a conditional entropy. So to explain this concept, let's first look at the, the scenario we had before, where we know nothing about the segment. So we have these probabilities indicating whether a word like meat occurs or doesn't occur in the segment. And we have the entropy function that looks like uh, what you see on the slide. Now suppose we know eats is present. So now we know the value of another random variable that denotes eats. Now that would change all these probabilities to conditional probabilities where we uh, look at the presence or absence of meat uh, given that we know eats occurred in the context. So as a result, if we replace the, these probabilities with their corresponding conditional probabilities, in the entropy function, we will get the conditional entropy. So this uh, equation now here, uh, shown here, uh, would be the conditional entropy, conditional on the presence of eats. Right? So you can see this is essentially the same entropy function as you have seen before, except that the, we all, uh, all the probabilities now have a condition. And this then tells us uh, the entropy of meat after we have known eats occurring in the segment. And of course, we can also define this conditional entropy for the scenario where we don't see eats. So if we know eats did not occur in the segment, then this ent conditional entropy would capture the uncertainty of meat in that context, in that condition. So now putting different scenarios together, we have the complete definition of conditional entropy as follows. Basically, we're going to consider both scenarios of uh, the value of eats, zero or one, and this gives us a probability that the eats is equal to zero or one, basically whether eats is present or absent. And this, of course, is the entropy, conditional entropy, of meat in that particular scenario. So if you expand this uh, entropy, then you have the following equation, where you see the involvement of those conditional probabilities. Now in general, for any discrete random variables x and y, we have the conditional entropy is no larger than the entropy of the, the variable x. So basically, this is the upper bound for the conditional entropy. That means by knowing more information about the segment, we won't be able to increase the uncertainty. We can only reduce the uncertainty. And that intuitively makes sense because as we know more information, it should always help us uh, pre make the prediction and it cannot hurt uh, the prediction in any case. 
Now, what's interesting here is also to think about the, what's the minimum possible value of this conditional entropy. Now, we know that, that the maximum value uh, is the entropy of x. But what about the minimum? So what do you think? I hope you can reach the conclusion that the, the, the minimum possible value would be zero. And it will be interesting to think about under what situation we'll achieve this. So let's see how we can use conditional entropy to capture syntagmatic relations. Now, of course, uh, this conditional entropy gives us directly one way to measure the association of two words because it tells us uh, to what extent we can predict the one word given that we know the presence or absence of another word. Now, before we look at the intuition um, of conditional entropy in capturing syntagmatic relations, it's useful to think of a very special case listed here. That is the conditional entropy um, of the word uh, given uh, itself. So uh, here we listed the, uh, this and conditional entropy in the middle. Right? So it's here. So what is the value of this? Now, this means we know whether meat occurs in the sentence, and we hope to predict whether the meat occurs in the sentence. Now, of course, this is zero because there's no uncertainty anymore. Once we know whether the word occurs in the segment, we already know the answer of the prediction. So this is zero. And that's also when this conditional entropy reaches the minimum. So now let's look at the, some other cases. So this is a case of knowing the and trying to predict the meat. And this is a case of knowing eats in trying to predict the meat. Which one do you think is smaller? Note that a smaller entropy means easier for prediction. Which one do you think is higher? Which one is, is smaller? Well, if you look at the uncertainty, then in the first case, the doesn't really tell us much about the meat. So knowing the occurrence of the doesn't really help us uh, reduce the entropy that much. So it stays as fairly close to the original uh, entropy of meat. Whereas in the case of eats, eats is related to meat. So knowing presence of eats or absence of eats would help us predict whether meat occurs. So it can help us reduce the entropy um, of meat. So we should expect the second term, namely this one, uh, to have a smaller entropy. And that means there is a stronger association between meat and eats. So we, all, we now also know when uh, this W is the same as this uh, meat, then the entropy, conditional entropy, would reach its minimum, which is zero. And for what kind of words would it reach its maximum? Well, that's when this W is not really related to meat. And like the, for example, and it would be very close to the maximum, which is the entropy of meat itself. So this suggests that we can use conditional entropy for mining syntagmatic relations. The algorithm uh, would look as follows. Uh, for each word, W1, we're going to enumerate over all other words, W2, and then we can compute the conditional entropy of W1 given W2. And we sort all the candidate words in ascending order of the conditional entropy because we want to favor a word that has a small entropy, meaning that it helps us predict the, uh, the target word W1. And then we can take the top rank of the candidate words as words that have potential syntagmatic relations with W1. Note that we need to use the threshold uh, to, to find uh, these words. The threshold can be the number of top candidates to take or uh, absolute value for the conditional entropy. Now, this would uh, allow us to mine the most strongly correlated words with the particular word W1 here. 
but it this algorithm does not help us um, mine the strongest k syntagmatic relations from an entire collection because in order to do that we have to ensure that these conditional entropies are comparable across different worlds. In uh, this case of discovering syntagmatic relations for a target world like W1, we only need to compare the conditional entropies um, for W1 given different worlds. And in this case, they are comparable. Right? So um, the conditional entropy of W1 given W2 and the conditional entropy of W1 given W3 are comparable. They all measure how, uh, how hard it is to predict the W1. But uh, if we think about the two pairs where we share uh, W2 in the same condition, and we try to predict the W1 and W3, then the en conditional entropies are actually not comparable. Well, and you can uh, think about this. Uh, question why so why why are they not comparable well that was because they have a different uh, upper bounds right so those upper bounds are precisely the entropy of w1 and the entropy of w3 and they have different upper bounds so we cannot really compare them in this way so how do we address this problem well uh, later we'll discuss we can use uh, mutual information to solve this problem Thank you.